Good morning and welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. Eighth Sunday of Pentecost. Today's sermon is from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 44. Title He Serves, You Receive, with Pastor Ken Cody. Our text is a gospel just read, and uh, we'll just emphasize one verse. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. This is our text. I suppose we might call or use as a theme how the church grows. Because we'll see how the method that Jesus used to grow the church. In the gospel reading from two weeks ago, Mark tells us that Jesus called 12, his 12 apostles and sent them out two by two. And on their mission, these disciples taught a message of repentance and forgiveness of sins. And they actually performed miracles, these disciples. Today's gospel continues that theme. Now the apostles have returned, and they tell Jesus everything that they had done and taught. And they were exhausted. Now Jesus knew that they had worked very hard, and he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. Even here, Jesus had compassion for the worker. He saw in them the hard work that they had done, and they deserved a rest. Then Jesus, after telling them that you need a rest, the disciples got into a boat and headed across the Sea of Galilee. But the crowd saw what was going on, and they followed Jesus and his disciples. As they were going across the sea in a boat, they walked along the seashore. And as they were walking along the seashore and passing through towns, people were joining them. So that when they got around to the other side, they actually got there before Jesus and the disciples. The only thing is that now Jesus and his disciples are surrounded by people again. You see, they had gone to get away from them, to get rest. And now here they were again. But this time they were out in the middle of nowhere. And in verse 24, Mark says, Jesus had compassion on them because they looked like sheep without a shepherd. Now this word compassion draws up all kinds of good things. What does compassion mean to you? And where will you find compassion in your heart? Is it in your mind, your soul? Well, the Greek word for compassion is splechna. Splechna. Does that sound like any splech, spleen? Splechna is the area of the stomach, includes the, the spleen, the livers, the intestines, the guts. And what Mark is indicating here in Jesus' attitude toward the people is that he had compassion and it went to the very depths of his gut. It's the kind of butterflies that you feel when butterflies are in your stomach. It's a feeling that he actually had. And he had compassion because they were helpless and they had no leader. So what was the first thing that Jesus did? Perform a miracle? You know, there's compassion in miracles. People were hurting, people were dying, people were in need of food. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus healed. 
the apostles actually performed an exorcism, people who were demon-possessed. So he freed them of this torture. There's much compassion in the miracles of Jesus. But here, the important thing for Jesus was not to begin here with a miracle, but to teach them. For Jesus, the primary act of compassion was to teach, to proclaim a message of repentance and forgiveness, the very reason he sent out his disciples on their mission work. In Mark 1, verse 15, Jesus says, The time is fulfilled, the time is now, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. You see, the crowds were so captivated by the teachings of Jesus that they forgot where they were. They even forgot that they were hungry. But after Jesus had finished teachings, the apostles saw that they were hungry and that they needed food to satisfy the stomachs of 5,000 people. But there was no cub food, no Coburns, no Culvers in that area. There was nothing. So even if they had enough money, which they did not, even if there was a village nearby, which there wasn't, it looked like an impossible task for the disciples to deliver that amount of food to that number of people. And our text says that there were 5,000 men. Now scholars have estimated, along with wives, women, and children, that that number ranges anywhere from 10 to 15,000 people. Where were they going to get the food for that? The disciples said, Jesus, shall we send them away so that they can get something to eat? And so Jesus tested his disciples. He said, you give them something to eat. Now remember, the disciples had just come back from a ministry of not only teaching, but performing miracles. They, they healed people. They exercised demons. They were performing miracles. And now, with 5,000 gathered before them, they didn't know what to do. Shall we use the money that we have in the treasury to buy them food? That's not really what they meant. What people, or what scholars think they meant was that they were implying that the feeding of the 5,000 was impossible. And in spite of all the miracles that they had done, they still look to themselves for an answer to their problem. And isn't that what we do? We try using the resources of this world instead of the resources that Jesus gives us. In other words, we search our own heart, mind, and feelings to see what we can do. How often, or maybe no one has, speaks to you about committing suicide. What kind of an answer do you give? Some answer from a psychologist? Or do you build them up through the word of God? That Christ Jesus died on the cross to give you hope in this life. So often we turn to what we have learned from the secular world, which is much good but it doesn't satisfy. Today's gospel, once again, teaches us that with Christ, all things are possible. And so, what did Jesus do? Did he perform a miracle first? He taught them first. And then he performed a miracle. He multiplied five loaves of bread to and two fish to feed anywhere from 10 to 15,000 people. Now this miracle shows us more than just the power 
and the glory of God. And here is here's where we get back to what I first said. It also gives us a picture of how the church grows. It gives us a picture of the holy Christian church. All believers in Christ. It gives us, if you will, a picture of the local congregation where there are true believers in Christ. And tells us a method of how it grows. When you look at the text, you'll see that Jesus did not walk up to every man, woman, and child and hand them a loaf of bread and two fish. No. He thanked God for the five loaves and the two fish. He blessed it and multiplied the fish and the bread. And he gave it to his disciples who delivered it to the people. He does the miracle and then distributes his gifts through his apostles. And his apostles then pass it on to pastors who then pass it on to you who then passes it on to others. And this is how the church grows. Jesus accomplished the miracle of your salvation and mine by dying on the cross and by rising again to new life from the dead. He sent his apostles out to preach a message of repentance and forgiveness. Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, miraculously taking upon himself our guilt and the world's sin. He preached his pastors then baptize infants and others to deliver that righteousness to them, to you. Jesus faced a guilty verdict because of your sin and mine so that his pastors can deliver a not guilty verdict to you. You see, his pastors distribute that same body and blood of Jesus Christ that you eat and drink in the Lord's Supper for the forgiveness of your sins. Jesus does the work and he passes that on to his prophets and apostles to, and them and then they to the pastors to the people and the people to other people. And this is how the church grows. But many people forget that. Many people forget the real reason for going to church. And the real reason why we go to church is to meet Jesus Christ and to receive his gifts. But there are many in the church who go go to church for entertainment, to keep mom and dad happy to hang around with friends, or because they like the pastor. Quite honestly, if entertainment is what you're after, you can get better entertainment on TV. To hang out with friends, well, your friends and family are going to die, and you'll be separated from them in time. But as far as the pastor is concerned, well, he's just a servant. When you think about that, why do you go to church? Let's go back to that miracle and see how Jesus satisfied the people. Now, do you think, really think that the 5,000 people cared who gave them the food? You think one said to the other, well, Mark looks a lot younger than Peter. And I bet Mark will work very well with our children. So let's go talk to Mark and get something from Mark. Thomas seems kind of confused. At least John over there is smiling. Well, let's go over to John. Now, can you imagine any of the members of that crowd 
making that kind of distinction that they cared who fed them? Of course not. The important thing is Jesus. Who cares what kind of a disciple is bringing to you the gifts that Jesus wants you to have? It is Jesus who gives. It's Jesus who prepares the meal. It's Jesus who was baptized in the Jordan River and then made water holy when administered on your children with his word and command. It is Jesus who earned forgiveness of sins for you and gives that word of forgiveness to pastors to give it to you so that you can share it with others. It's Jesus who gave his teachings to the apostles and prophets, who gave it to the pastors, who pastors then give it to you, and then you give it to others. And this is how the church grows. It's Jesus who gave up his body on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins and administers that same body to you by mouth when pastors give you the bread of the sacrament. It's Jesus who shed his blood on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins and then administers that same blood by mouth as the pastor gives you the wine of the sacrament. Now think about it. God in the flesh his baptism on you and your children. His preaching, his forgiveness in your ears. And his true body and blood in your mouth for the forgiveness of your sins. Faith receiving these gifts. But gifts that Jesus gives to you. Gifts that you receive from him. He opened heaven for you with his resurrection. And he promised his presence to be with you always, even unto the end of the world when he ascended into heaven. He gives these things to you, just as he gave fish and bread to the 5,000. And then he sends his servants, the pastors, to bring his divine service to you right here but you receive these gifts from Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us please rise as together we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thanks for viewing today's sermon. 
Faith Lutheran Church is located at 3000 County Road 8 Southeast, St. Cloud, Minnesota, 56304. Phone 320-252-3315.